So humans are distinctive, mm -hmm. especially among primates, in that males get very attached to their children mm -hmm. and their partners and spend years providing for them. Um, how common is that pattern? So it depends totally on which taxon you're talking about. Um, if you're a mammal, about 90% chance is that you're a member of a species where this doesn't happen Males at all. Males don't do anything Males for their kids. don't do anything. Um, if you're a bird, then it's exactly the opposite. 90% uh, of species have biparental care. Both parents feed their young. Um, if you're a fish, then the most typical thing is actually that there, nobody cares. But if you're a fish with care, then male care is about nine times as, com as common as female so care. So how does an evolutionary biologist come up with a hypothesis about this, and how do you test that hypothesis? So the reasons, uh, this has been uh, looked into um, a lot. Um, and when it comes to the fish question in particular, I think that the sort of general assumptions that we easily make, which is that caring is very costly, and if you have two kids, it's twice as costly as if you only have one, that actually doesn't apply anymore. Because if you think about a typical caring fish, you have your clutch of eggs, you protect them against predators, you keep everything clean, water flowing, and so on. This is work that is about equally energetically costly, no matter whether you have 100 eggs or 1,000 eggs and so on. That means that if a male is already caring for young, he can easily add to the brood if additional females come and spawn with him. Um, and from the female perspective, it might actually make sense to spawn with somebody who already has somebody else's kids um, or fry, um, because these males, they also sometimes have to be cannibalistic. They can never leave the place where the eggs are, so they have to sometimes eat a little bit from their own clutch. Females then get safety numbers if they spawn where there's also other eggs, because if somebody gets eaten, it might not be your egg. Right. So the, and that's actually the beauty of a lot of evolutionary ecology, that you have to rethink if the rules of the game are different. What is, should you expect sexual jealousy in fish? No, you are just happy if he has other females so as well. So the idea about females all laying their eggs together reminds me of having lunch one time with a very famous neurosurgeon mm -hmm. back at University of Michigan. I was telling him about evolution mm -hmm. and behavior, and he, got, he said, well, it's really clear that evolution doesn't make things happen right. I was down in Florida recently, and I saw a lot of turtle eggs hatching. And they all hatched at exactly the same time. The seagulls just ate them all. And of course, I tried to explain that if they hatched every day for months, then every single one would get eaten, that the exactly. only chance is to charge the sea altogether. That's right, yes. He didn't want to hear that. Uh, that's, that's sad. Right. That's sad.